This is Plane Maker Tutorial 34 and Blender Part 20. I want to cover manipulators in this tutorial. And here's what we have so far. I cleaned up, actually, I cleaned up my folder here of the ERJ140, and I created a backup folder of all the stuff that I had beforehand, just so it's a little more overviewable. All right, so what I'm looking for is the cockpit and cockpit lit texture files. So comparing the two, they're pretty much exactly laid out the same way, except for this one has black where everything is supposed to be dark and it's left white wherever we have text that's supposed to light up in the dark. And the goal here is to control different aspects of the cockpit's lighting with different faders here. Okay, so we've animated all these knobs before. So basically if we go to the scripts window here and we take a look at what this PFD fader is doing, it is basically hooked up to a instrument brightness ratio data ref. Now here it says this is not a valid data ref, but that is because the version of this export script or import script does not know that this feature has been added to Xplain since this script was made. So you cannot select it from here, but you can find out about it by researching it online. I found it under wiki.xplain.com, which I'll show you a little bit more of later. But now we know that this PFD is hooked up to an instrument display brightness feature. I can determine which panels are lit up by which knob. I can click on this background panel and the knob number here is zero, whereas the knob number on this one is one. So keep that in mind when you're starting to program the knobs. So all the cockpit objects whose brightness is supposed to be affected by knob number zero need to be labeled in PlaneMaker with knob number zero here. And you can go through, I think there's 16 possibilities. These guys are going to be affected by knob number four. So once you have that set up in Plane Maker, you can actually go ahead and do some work here. Now what Xplane will normally do is it will have two sets of textures, the panel lit and the panel. And the panel lit texture will kick in once it's dark enough in the simulator. It'll automatically turn itself on and off depending on the time of day or the brightness that we have outside. So there's a definite point at which the lit texture turns itself on. But you can override that system by hooking up the lit texture to one of these faders. And how do you do that? Well, I'm going to go to wiki.explain.com. And here is where you get all the information you need to develop these panels. So for example, I'm looking for more information on how to make 3D cockpits. What I'll find out here under manipulators is that I can give different commands, such as this one here, to objects that I've modeled in Blender in order for them to perform certain functions, the data ref that you would enter in here. If I can figure out which data ref is the one that controls the lighting of the lit texture, then I can enter it. And with this prefix here, I can make it a mouse clickable region that will allow me to click on that knob and drag it back and forth, and it will affect this particular data ref. And that's exactly what we want to do. But how do you interpret this? How would you, as a newcomer to this whole process, know what to do or where to type this particular text in and how to make it work? Well, here's the thing. When you export an object using that export script, it creates an object file. Now, this cockpit object will not open up directly in Blender, but you can right-click on it and say, I want to open it with text edit. And if it's not in your list, you can select other and go to text edit in your from your program file list and it will open up in text editor. You can also make it default to open with text editor, which is what I did by going get info for the Mac or a properties for the PC and then select open with and then the program that you want it to open with and then say change all and that will change every extension that ends with OBJ will now open with text editor. So what I have here is now a text representation of my object file. And what this all means is I have a whole bunch of vertices. I have their coordinates along a coordinate system. And I have some other information pertaining to uh, how they're hooked up in terms of faces and textures and those kinds of things. And this list goes on and on and on and on. Each of these lines represents one vertex in my model. And if you get down to the bottom of things right here, you start seeing that things change a little bit. There's a whole bunch of lines of code here that have an M beginning, an M end, and this particular thing will refer to one object that has been animated in Blender. And then you can look here, panel brightness ratio. That's the identifier for this bone. That is a data ref that this bone drives. So we can find that here and say panel brightness ratio. And then there's an identifier number after that. Now this is the number that I mentioned briefly 
that we saw in Playmaker that will identify which cockpit object will be lit up by which knob. So I can go in here and label these knobs different numbers. You can actually do that with limited success in Blender already, but it's not a very reliable thing because sometimes the, the file names are too long and you cannot fit or you cannot change uh, the ID of this particular object. Let's see if I can do it. See, I can't even do it here for this one. So sometimes you have to give them false names just so that the Blender script will export it, and then you have to go into this text file and edit them to what you actually need them to be. I have already entered some stuff for these particular knobs. That's why they're functional in X-Plane, and I will want to show you how to do that. Basically what I do is I keep a backup copy of the manipulators. It's the same file, the last file that worked properly with the ERJ140 cockpit object, and this allows me to have a reference of what I can drag back into this object file after I've exported it from Blender. Because what happens is, if I export this file here using the export script, it'll overwrite the object file that we have here that we might have meticulously programmed already. Here I've got the old uh, backup of one of the ones that I've done. You can see here pilot side knob one. I've labeled them as best as I could, but the order and the labeling that I gave it here are not necessarily going to coincide with what we had coming straight out of the export script from Blender. So as you can see here, I've assigned all the left knobs to different functions, and I'll go through and help you interpret what I've done here. So the first line of code here, this is the altered version, just to compare. This is the altered version, and this is the unaltered version of a similar knob. So there's less lines of code here, and this is all that you have to add in order to make these knobs functional the way you want them to be in X-Plane. So the first thing you add is you add this attribute cockpit region. And then you close it off by saying attribute no cockpit because you don't want this function to spill over into the rest of the cockpit object. So that's why you have to close it off here with no cockpit. So what this does is it opens up this particular region from triangles number 64,491. There's 72 of them here that we want to be able to manipulate with a mouse. So it determines that these tries are a cockpit region that is going to be clickable. And we determine that it's clickable by adding this line of code here. Attribute, manipulate, drag axis, rotate, medium. And you can find all that information on the X-Plane wiki. So here we have this format. Attribute, manipulate, drag axis, and then cursor. So this denotes that the cursor is going to show itself as being a rotating cursor. You can also have it be a hand or a linear or something like that. Then you have medium, which is the size. And here you have the amount of each step left or right, that this object is going to be affected by this manipulator. In the x and in the y direction, and in the z direction, it's nothing. And then here you have value 1 and value 2, which means 0, I want this light to be completely turned off, and 1, I want this light to be completely turned on. And there should be a fade in between the two, and the value between each step of the fade should be 0 0.05. And this is the data ref that I want to be manipulating with this particular knob. And then after the data ref, I can enter a text that will help me identify which knob I'm dealing with. In x you can turn on a feature that says display instrument labels or something like that. I forget exactly what it is. And then this text here will show up if I hover my mouse over that particular knob. This line of code right here refers to the brightness that I want this knob to have based on a different fader that it controls the brightness of this knob. Now this is really important to note because if I look at the code for the first knob, I see that the data ref that this knob drives is called sim cockpit 2 switches instrument brightness ratio 3. So what I want is to be able to turn the first knob and affect the brightness of the second, third, fourth, and fifth knob. And that's why I have this line of code right here, because as long as I'm within this cockpit region, parentheses, I can actually tell X-Plane to apply the brightness that is being controlled by this knob to this particular object here that we're dealing with. And this means that I can take this attribute, light level, that is being controlled by this first fader, and I can apply it to any segment of the cockpit that I can identify. For example, if I want the pedestal between the two pilots to be lit up by this particular fader as well, I can copy this whole line of code, and I can look for the pedestal somewhere down here, which I have actually made a group out of in Blender. Turns out I haven't made a group of the pedestal, but I've made a group of other stuff, like for example the co-pilot's primary flight display. 
So I'll go in here and say I want the Copilot's primary flight display to be affected by the parameter that the first knob controls. Now how do I arrive at these particular groups? 